Greetings, everyone. My name is Matthew Roach. I'm a program manager on the Power BI team at Microsoft, and I'm here to talk to you about data flows, an exciting new capability for self-service data preparation coming in preview to Power BI. Instead of spending a lot of time talking, let's jump right in and take a look at a demo to see data flows at work. As you can see here, I'm in a workspace inside the Power BI environment. Uh, data flows are a new artifact type that are available inside of Power BI workspaces, just like dashboards and reports. I'm going to click on the data flows tab, and I will come up to the, uh, the Power BI menu to choose create to create a new data flow. Creating a new data flow gives us the opportunity to define new entities. An entity is a reusable data set that's stored inside the data flow and is powered by Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 behind the scenes. And we will begin simply by choosing Add New Entities to launch the new Power Query Online experience. For any user that is familiar with Power Query in Excel or Power Query in Power BI Desktop, this is going to be an immediately familiar set of tools and capabilities with similar user experience and, and similar connectors. We currently have over 20 connectors that are available for uh, Power BI Online. We're adding more connectors as we go, aiming to have full parity between the online and desktop experience. For this demo, I'm going to choose the common data service for applications as my data source. So I'll choose this from the list, and I will put in the server URL for my Dynamics environment. You can see here that I could also select, if necessary, an on-premises gateway to use. We have the same capabilities for on-premises data source connectivity. And uh, you can also see that my organizational account, which I've previously used here, has been remembered uh, so I don't need to explicitly sign in. I'm already signed in, so I'll choose Next to connect to this Dynamics environment. Here we can see the list of entities that are available inside the common data service for apps. If I expand out the entities list, I will see the full set of objects that are available or entities that are available inside Dynamics, and I can choose the ones that I want to make available for easy analytics across my Power BI users. For this demo, I will choose two. I'll choose account, and I will choose sales order. Just like you would expect from any Power BI or Power Query experience, once I select an object, I will be able to view a preview to scan through the data and get an idea of its shape and its contents before I work with it. When I choose Next, I will go into the Power Query Editor where I can see the two queries that I've defined and I can edit them as necessary. Because I want to load these into the common data model inside my data flow, one of the steps that I want to take is to map these entities to standard common data model schemas. So by choosing the Map to Standard button on our Power Query toolbar, I will be able to say that not only is this uh, an entity named account, but it is specifically a common data model account entity. And this metadata will be stored in Power BI so that other services and applications can take advantage of it. As you can see here, we have a list of source columns. These are the columns that exist uh, at the end of our query step. So this is the shape of the query that we've defined in the Power Query Online Editor. And on the right, we see all of the fields that make up this standard common data model account entity schema. Because we're coming from a CDM aware data source to a CDM aware destination, there's no explicit mapping that's required here, but we could be coming from any data source uh, such as Salesforce or SAP or any system where there is an account logical entity in those situations, we may have more transformation that's necessary, and we may need to explicitly map columns, but here, the mapping is done automatically for us. The first thing that I want to do is to take this account entity that I've created with this query and to map it to the common data model. Specifically, data flows in Power BI integrate in with the Microsoft Common Data Model to have standard representations of business entities similar to what Dynamics 365 and Power Apps do today. Once I've selected the query, I can select the Map to Standard button on the Query Toolbar, and I can then choose 
the CDM entity type that I will map this query to. Since this is an account entity coming out of Dynamics, uh, I will choose the account entity here, and uh, the, the field mapper inside of the Power BI experience will automatically look at the column names and data types and do as much automatic mapping as possible. Since we're coming from a CDM-aware source to a CDM-aware destination, no explicit mapping is required here. I'll choose OK, and then I'll do a little bit of editing or a little bit of transformation for our sales order uh, entity. When I select sales order, one of the things that I want to do is I want to change the data type of a column. So I will scroll over here to the right, I will choose my created on column, and I will change the data type that's being loaded into the Power BI data flow from date time zone to date time. This will be necessary for a later demo. Refer back to this when we get there. The final thing that I want to do for sales order is also to map this to a, a standard entity type. In this case, this is going to be the order entity in the common data model. By using the common data model for the data that we're loading into these Power BI data flows, we're able to identify uh, their specific types and semantics and other applications uh, that use the common data model format will be able to easily read and consume them, understanding in advance uh, the contract that these entities uh, represent. So once I've created the two entities in my data flow, I will choose Done. Power BI will validate these queries to ensure that they can be loaded, proactively letting you know of potential problems that come in. And here I'm taken back to the data flow screen where I can see the entities that I've created. I want to save this and I will give it a name. And a description. When I save this, Power BI will prompt me to refresh the data flow now or to schedule a refresh for an ongoing scheduled refresh to keep the data inside the data flow current. And I will choose Refresh Now. This will start immediately executing the queries that define these two entities and populating the data flow in the Power BI service with this data. I will close out. I actually want to create a second data flow pulling in data from a different source. So again, back in my workspace, I will say create data flow. I will say add new entities. And I will choose SQL Server Database. I will put in my server name and I will put in my database name as well. Again, my uh, credentials are cached because I've connected before, and I'll choose Next. I do also want to stress that if this had been an on-premises SQL Server database rather than an Azure SQL database, I would still have the same ability to connect using the same on-premises gateways that are used for other parts of Power BI. Here, I've connected to the database. I can see all of the tables uh, and views that I have permissions to access. And I'm going to both view and select our accounts and calls table. So I'll choose this one table. We'll choose next. We'll give this guy a different name. We'll call that call data. Uh, I don't need any transformations. And because this is coming from uh, a strongly typed SQL Server table, all of the, uh, the metadata, such as the data types, is automatically pulled in. So I will choose Done. Again, my queries will be validated. And I'll save this data flow. And I'll give that data flow a name and description. Again, I will choose to refresh, but this time I'm going to set up a refresh schedule. This will take me into uh, the settings for the data flow, and I have the ability to specify gateway connections, to edit my data source credentials, uh, and to set up schedules very similar to what we can do with data sets inside a Power BI workspace as well. Here I will uh, turn on the scheduled option. I will keep my data up to date. I'll specify a daily frequency. We'll choose Pacific time, and we will choose to add two times. We want to refresh this once at 8 o'clock in the morning 
and we want to refresh this once at 8 o'clock in the afternoon. When I apply these changes, the schedule is saved inside the Power BI service, and this data flow will remain current by executing those queries uh, twice per day based on the schedule that I've set up. I'll come back here into the workspace, uh, and I will also, for the purposes of this demo, I'll refresh this data flow now. With this refresh, again, we'll execute that query immediately, and we will then be able to go in and access the data that's inside these data flow entities without needing to wait until the next scheduled refresh. One other thing that we'll want to do is we'll want to be able to look at the refresh history for a data flow. If I select this from the action menu for uh, my dynamics data, data flow, you can see that this is refreshed once, and the refresh was completed successfully. And if necessary, particularly when diagnosing or troubleshooting problems with connectivity or data source availability, I can click on the download arrow next to any uh, entry in the refresh history list, and I can view a CSV file that contains a per-entity uh, detailed list of the most recent execution. So this is a resource that's available for diagnostics and troubleshooting, or just seeing how long the individual uh, refreshes take. We'll close this out, and this is the end of our first demo. Everything that we've done up until this point is available to any user with a Power BI Pro license. So it's worth stressing that data flows are not a premium only feature. Data pros are available uh, for uh, anyone with the ability to create things inside a workspace, uh, but there are some capabilities that are only available to workspaces that are backed by dedicated premium capacity. We're going to look at two of these. We're going to look at incremental refresh as well as linked entities. Let's look at that incremental refresh first. Now, if you remember, when we were setting up our Dynamics Data data flow, we had two entities. We had the account entity and the sales order entity, and we explicitly transformed one of our columns. We transformed the created on column to be of the date time data type. The reason that we did this was to enable incremental refresh for this entity. Notice here on the right-hand side of our action bar, we have incremental refresh as an option. When I select this, I can enable it on an entity-by-entity -entity basis. Now, incremental refresh is an important capability for uh, data preparation and ETL at scale because it provides the ability to only load in a subset of the data, which is vital for very large data sources or data sources where there are limited capabilities or a, a limited refresh window. So here, once I turn on incremental refresh for this entity, I will choose the field that we're filtering on. We'll specify how many rows or rows from what period we want to store. Let's say, for example, we're choose, gonna store data from the last five years, and we also can choose what period we want to refresh rows from uh, each time that we do an incremental refresh. So we'll say that we'll pull in data from the last seven days. Now, if the data source supports it, we can also say that we're going to uh, only detect the uh, records that have changed between incremental refreshes. So we're being even more selective. For this particular uh, entity, I'm going to leave it as it is, and I'm going to choose Save. Now, once I save the data flow as well, each time that this data flow refreshes, as we'll do now, the account entity will do a full refresh. We'll pull in all of the data from that account entity in the data source. But for this sales order entity, because we've configured incremental refresh, it will only pull in data that matches the criteria that we've specified uh, in that incremental refresh settings. The next premium only capability that I want to demonstrate is that of linked entities and computed entities inside Power BI data flows. This is one of the most exciting and powerful capabilities coming to data flows because it essentially reduces the load of orchestrating multiple uh, data preparation processes. Essentially, uh, a linked entity is an entity that references another entity inside another data flow inside of Power BI. 
it's possible to create complex and powerful interactions between data flows and entities. And because all of this data is managed by the Power BI service, the orchestration can be handled automatically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by creating a new data flow. And I will choose link entities from other data flows to get started by creating that linked entity. So here, I'll be prompted to connect to the Power BI service because that's where I'm pulling my data from. And once I've done this, I will see the list of premium workspaces that I have permissions to access that contain data flows. So here I will pull in data from my Dynamics data, data flow, and I will choose the account entity, and from my SQL Server data, data flow, and I will pull in information uh, from the call data entity. So I'll select these two, get the same preview that I'm used to, and I will choose next. Let me zoom in here and highlight this. In our, our queries list, we have two entities, and each one of them has uh, a link icon next to them, demonstrating that they are a linked entity that, as the message here says, they can't be modified inside uh, this data flow. They can only be made, uh, or edits can only be made in the data flow where this entity physically resides. Essentially, a linked entity is like a pointer. But what we will do is we will use these linked entities to create a computed entity that references them and uses their data. So on my Power Query toolbar, I will choose Combine Tables and Merge Queries as New. And I will choose Account, and I will choose Call Data, and I will say that this is a left outer join. We want to keep that default. And we will have Account ID and Account ID to define this. So this is a standard merge like any Power Query user uh, will be familiar doing. I'll choose OK. I'll give my query a name. And there are a few things that I want to point out here as well. The first one, and I'm going to zoom back in, the first one is that this entity has a lightning bolt icon next to it. Uh, this is showing that this is a computed entity, which means that when it executes, rather than pulling in data from an external data source using that Power Query or M pipeline uh, that the other entities have used, it will actually do in lake compute because the data inside Power BI entities, as we mentioned earlier, is actually stored in an Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 resource that is managed by the Power BI service, we can take advantage of the fact that it's in a data lake, and instead of pulling the data out to do computations on it, we can simply transform it in the lake itself. The other thing that I want to mention uh, is that there is one warning down here. If we look at all the way to the right in our query, as we would expect, there is a new column added for the right-hand table in that merge called call data. Because this is a complex table type column, this can't actually be written into uh, the format that is used inside the data lake. So we need to expand this out. Let's clear this use original column uh, names as prefix. Let's clear the account ID because we already have that coming in from the left-hand table. And we'll choose OK. This will cause our warning to disappear, and it will give us the table that we're interested in. So once this is done, I'll choose Done. The standard validation uh, will be performed to make sure that we do have the ability to refresh this. And here in our entity list for the data flow, we can see that we have these three entities. The linked entities give us the ability to edit them inside their source data flow, and we have those icons reminding us that these are linked and computed entities. So I will save this. I will give it a name and a description. And I am not going to refresh it. Instead, I will close out of the data flow and return to the list of data flows that are in my workspace. Now, this 
account and call data data flow references entities that are in the Dynamics data and the SQL Server data uh, data flows. The value of linked and computed entities is that the Power BI service knows that these entities get their data from here. When I refresh these two data flows, because of those relationships, the Power BI service knows that the downstream dependent data in that computed entity should be refreshed as well, and that orchestration is automatically handled in a predictable and transactionally consistent manner. The last thing that I want to demonstrate uh, while we're here in the Power BI portal is some of the metadata that's being created. Now, I've mentioned a few times that the data is being stored in the common data model format uh, in Azure Data Lake Storage. Now, what we can do is we can, for any of these data flows, and I'll choose the Dynamics data one because it has those, uh, those two entities in it. So I will choose it, and there is an Export JSON option here. The format that's used in Azure Data Lake Storage to physically store the data in these Power BI entities is a format known as CDM folders or Common Data Model folders. And when I look at this inside of Visual Studio Code, we'll apply a little bit of pretty formatting here to make it a little bit easier to read. What we can see is that this uh, model file, this model JSON file, contains all of the metadata that describes uh, the name, the description, the version, when it was modified, all of the entities that are in it, details about the metadata of the entities, and I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom here. We're not going to look at all of this, but we can see things down to the level of the physical storage for the, uh, uh, for the entities themselves uh, and uh, the individual partitioning on this. So notice what we've got the CSV file, which is the storage in the data flow, and the partitions. The reason we have the partitioning set up is because of the incremental refresh that we've defined as well. And nothing here uh, required the user to have knowledge of the underlying format. They simply needed to perform the actions in this familiar Power BI experience. Now that we've created data flows and the entities that they contain inside the Power BI service, the next thing that we'll do is we'll use them. Data flows exist both as a self-service data preparation capability and as a mechanism for data reuse. These entities are designed to enable a business user, anyone who's familiar and comfortable using Power Query, to create entities that can then be reused by multiple users in multiple workspaces. Any user that has access to the workspace by default can read the data that's in a data flow, enabling easy self-service reuse within the Power BI service. So here, I'm working in Power BI Desktop. I've got a brand new PBIX file, and I'm going to come up to the Get Data menu, and I'm going to choose Power BI Data Flows. Now this connector is in preview, just as data flows are, uh, but I will use it to connect to the workspace that I've created, I will use it to connect to some of the entities that I've created. So I'll choose uh, account from the dynamics data, and I will choose the call data from our SQL Server data loaded data flow, and I will choose uh, load to load this data into my PBIX file for further analysis. Now, the key thing to keep in mind here is that a data flow from a visualization perspective, uh, data flow is simply just another data source. As you saw here, it's incredibly easy for a business user to discover and evaluate and understand the data flows because they're, they're organized into workspaces, they're available right inside the Power BI experience, so there's no connection string or server name required. But once I load that information in, I can then very easily evaluate the data that's in here. I can customize my tabular model. I can do additional modifications in my query, but I can then start loading that data uh, into my visualizations, build reports, publish them, build dashboards, just like we can with any data that's inside uh, the Power BI experience. Now, in summary, data flows are a new capability that are coming to Power BI. They exist inside the Power BI service and bring the Power Query experience into the browser with Power Query Online. Power 
uh, Power BI data flows give Power Query users the ability to create these self-service entities. So it's self-service data preparation, and it's powered by Azure Data Lake storage so that we have the power of the underlying Azure Data platform to enable scale, to enable performance, and to enable reuse across multiple experiences. Thank you very much.